Two weeks ago, we had these gentlemen in the studio that I'm about to introduce. We had Jeremy Aldrich, who is the director of The Boys Next Door, currently playing at CRE Outreach's Blue Door Theater. Yes. Yeah. Um, and one of the stars of the show, August McAdoo, yeah. uh, who's playing Norman. Uh, they were here two weeks ago to talk before the show opened. The show has opened. I was there on opening night. The show was incredible. I wrote a, a bit about it yesterday on my personal Facebook. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We're going to talk more. Uh, but I just want to congratulate you both. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Thanks for coming. Well, And for your feedback, which is amazing. Well, it was a lovely thing to be there for. Um, and, I'm, and then you've had two more performances after I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the show will run this weekend plus two more weeks uh we go all the way until november 11th i think november our... 11th so a couple of weeks yeah a couple of few weeks uh but it's a small theater so mm -hmm. if people yes. want to go they need to get tickets now because i have no doubt that you're probably going to sell out you were sold out on the first night hopefully yes. so um that's what happens is that word of mouth gets around and things sell out and i don't want you crying and saying well i can't get in and <laughs> can you call somebody shannon i could no i'm not going to call anybody <laughs> uh, you need to get off your you you know what and get your tickets get now tickets now uh, okay so if you haven't watched any of the interviews just to give you a primer on this the the show talk a little bit about what the show is about in okay, general so the show in general is about um, uh, the, the lead Jack um, played by Mason Vokes by the way who's mm -hmm. really fantastic in the show mm -hmm. um, is about a social worker who's working with four men who they're attempting to mainstream into society and they have uh, various um, uh, challenges that they're that they're working with they have a schizophrenic uh, fellow to developmentally disabled uh, gentleman and um, and then kind of an undefined sort of anxious yeah I don't know what I don't know we, we talked about it last time we can't really yeah, define you know, it's it's funny, the first Arnold's. time I, I saw the show, I think the first two times I saw the show, I felt that there was an autism spectrum diagnosis there. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the seeing it on Friday was the first time I've seen it since having a child on the autism spectrum. And can I tell you, it's a different experience. Yeah. Plus which, it's a different experience because of how you chose to cast the show. Correct. So yeah. talk a little bit about the casting choices. Okay, so um, we actually cast the show out of CRE's uh, three main um, art therapy programs. So uh, the uh, Veterans Empowerment Theater, we have three uh, actors out of the Veterans Empowerment Theater, which draws from people who um, you know have come out of the armed forces uh, and have varying uh, things that they carry with them, such as PTSD or and so on fr from that experience. Um, and then we also have uh, our um, Rex and Friends group, which is for uh, folks with autism and that are on the spectrum. That's the program that uh, August came out of. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our Theater by the Blind program. So we have five actors that are, uh, that are blind in the show as well. And so... Which um, is not immediately evident. Which is wild, no. isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's really... Uh, it's really amazing what what I think we've been able to do together in that respect as well. So um, my idea on that and my pitch to CRE for this show was that I felt that we could bring a lot more authenticity to the show and to the performances if we had people, actors playing the parts that are themselves, um, you know, ha have things that they overcome in their everyday life just as these characters do. Mm -hmm. Whether they matched up perfectly or not, that that core experience would be something they can draw upon. And I mean, maybe you can talk to August about that, but um, I think that's happened. And they've really been able to draw upon their, you know, as all actors do, draw upon their own experiences, bring their own experiences and their own um, instrument really to the work. And they've done that. and. Um, I really think it's it's authentic and beautiful. The show's really turned out nicely. And I actually think you went three steps further than that. Um, but we can talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um, but I do want to talk with August about... So, August, you're playing Norman. Yes. And tell us a little bit about Norman and what his difficulties are. Norman is... Um, he is on the spectrum because I, I... As I was reading the script, I was I was getting character breakdown. I noticed that Norman ha has a lot of similarities to myself, mm. whereas I 
get attached to airplanes. I love music. Um, I, I'm big on technology. And when I noticed that Norman, his hook, uh, his hook was number one, donuts, number two, his keys, and number three, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things he cares about. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, yeah, this is, this is similar to myself. Okay, so you found the ways that you were similar. Uh, now, you had shared with us uh, last time. I don't want to assume that you want to share again, but Absolutely. how do you identify yourself? I identify myself as someone, someone who, uh, who is a protector. Mm -hmm. Someone who will not back down from a challenge. I love a challenge. Okay. And someone who, most importantly, loves to get the job done. Okay. <laughs> and I think that, that we see that about you. But so you uh, have been working with, you were, you were with Rex and Friends yes. uh, as part of CRE Outreach. And um, in this process, what was this like for you? You've been in plays before, you've been in musicals mm -hmm. before. Had you been in just plays that didn't have music before? I was in plays that had music. I was in a musical called The National Cesspool back in 2007. Okay. And that was through Performing Arts Studio West. Okay. And that was my first, that was my first big time, you know, I'm on stage, I got music, I'm taking all sorts of direction, you know, from different directors. So now you're kind of a veteran so now, performer, yes, right? Yes. And this is your first time working with Jeremy? Yes, and, and, and like I said before, and I'll say it again, I'll say it as many times as I can, this guy is a wonderful guy. He's one of the best directors on the face of the planet. You know, if there's, if there's a challenge that he brings to me, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do my best to meet it and exceed it. And, and so let's talk a little bit about this process and what, what was hard for you in this process for this particular show. Um, I would say that the hardest thing for me was matching dialogue with action. Mm. What do you mean by that? I.e., uh, I say I would have a line that says, um, I, got you, I got you this, I got you a present. Here, open it because I have to go to ref the refrigerator. I have to pull out a box, mm -hmm. and I have to give it to Sheila. Mm -hmm. And when I when I was first going over the script, I'm like, okay, line, action, action, line. I'm mm -hmm. trying to combine it, but truth be told, during rehearsals, it was like, okay, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. But once those lights went down on opening night. Mm -hmm. Once, once the announcements were being made that the show was about to commence, I felt all stress just go away. <laughs> it was, it was the biggest relief off my shoulders. Wonderful, wonderful. What did you learn through this process? Through the process, I learned that no matter what you're doing, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment because if you take yourself out of the moment then it won't, the scene sort of disconnects mm -hmm. in a way. Wonderful.